do this. Mm. I'm already used to it. Mm. We should take a picture. Selfie in bed with my <laughs> bae and breakfast. You started you and selfies. Mm. Silly faces. Mm -mm. I like it. No, I don't like that. Well, I like it. You're only choosing your good sides, which is not nice. This one's funny. Um, who's this? Um, just some girl. Oh, from the internet? Actually, um, someone I know. So why do you have her picture? A sexy picture. My full names are, um, it could be say Emmanuel Ifan Chiku. I hear from Delta State, Kuala. Um, I'm Nigerian. <laughs> uh, what else? I'm the first of um, my amazing parents. I have two younger siblings. I have a young, my younger brother and my younger sister. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing family. I'm a very family oriented person and uh, uh, my backbone, my family is my backbone, basically. And uh, they've always supported me right from um, right from the very start of everything. Even when I started off entertainment while I was in university, I remember my parents not frowning at it, but they were like, "Okay, just make sure it doesn't affect your studies and your grades." And um, so always make them happy. I always make sure I kept good grades so that they wouldn't have any reason to be like, "Okay, I can see your grades are dropping because of." what you're doing. I try to maintain good grades and also um, do what I love to do, which is entertainment. Childhood for me was uh, was really interesting, actually. I remember, like I said, I'm the first child. My parents have always, uh, I think, not my parents, my mom. My mom was really a very, um, she was an entertainment person because she used to host a lot of kids' events. Um, she had this DJ service and entertainment um, business. She still does, actually, um, where she hosts the event. She has DJ services. She has mascots and all of oh, She practically plans children's birthday parties. And um, so I started off from that. I remember I used to wear clowns' costumes and sometimes I wear the, um, the, the bunny or the the Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Thinking about it now, yeah, I used to do all of that just to support my mom. Of course, she used to sort me out a bit. It was very, I think at that time, she used to give me like sometimes 300 naira, sometimes 500 naira. And that was a lot of money because she used to get like events, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. And then sometimes I'd make a thousand naira every week. As a young boy, that was something for me. And I used to save that. But yeah, I, that's, that's practically where my... Um, my, I think I got my entertainment uh, signs from, or my entertainment skills from my mom. Um, and she's of course one of my biggest supporters. Um, so yeah, that was childhood for me. So I used to do a lot of that, and then I went, then I learned how to DJ because she also has a DJ service. You know, she has a lot of DJs, and I learned from them. So I used that to start up my career when I got into school, when I got into campus in Kenya. I was like the DJ of school, you know, I used to organize parties and organize events. So like I said, this is what my mom used to do, organize kids' parties. So for me, I took that a notch higher and I used to organize the biggest parties in campus and I would DJ and I used to bring in the, the spice of West African music and Nigerian music because at that time in Kenya we didn't have a lot of, we didn't have, I think we just had two or three Nigerian music, but I used to bring, so a lot of people used to look forward to that. And uh, so I got the name DJ Feko and everything kicked off from there. Then I went into modeling, and, uh, and from there I went into music and acting, and I the rest is history. Yes, <laughs> then I came back to Nigeria. So yeah, so I had a very interesting childhood. Good morning. Good morning. Keep it broaden. Give me assurance. Give me assurance. Sammy. Give my baby assurance. Mm -hmm. Sam, Sammy. Sammy. Sammy! Uh, um, unfortunately, my album and my album launch is in the past for now. I can't go back to that for now. Um, for now. Um, I think I have beautiful songs. I think I have beautiful songs. I know I think. I know I have beautiful songs. But okay, let's just leave my songs and my musical career for, for, for now. Okay, I think maybe when I'm ready for it, I can begin to explore and open up on that particular area. 
Trust is everything. Baby, you are my one and only. You're the woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with. God willing, the mother of my kids. I have my faults, yes. But never, ever doubt my love for you. Um, okay, like I said, acting was something I literally bumped into, right? Uh, but I've enjoyed it. I think I've grown as an actor. Of course, I still have a whole lot of learning to do. I still have a whole lot of growing to do. But um, I feel like I've been able to grow to a certain level. And um, of course, the level of um, being able to create stuff, which creates storylines. Um, maybe not getting to the screenplay aspect of it, but yeah, I, I come up with ideas, stories, uh, write down stories, and I share with writers and we come up with the screenplay and how we want it to uh, come out. And a lot of times, um, sometimes you find people not understanding this or not being able to do or produce these things the way you would the vision because it's your vision and a lot of times you can you are the only person that can bring the, you know portray your vision the way you want it to look because you're the one who has the vision anyway you know so sometimes when you try to play your vision to some people they don't get it you know so that's why a lot of times they find me like now me going to producing because I want to be able to bring like I really want the, the audience to see my own vision so I really want to be able to tell my stories and and um, and you know just pass it on like that you know so that's why apart from just being the actor you know I'm now I try to work now a bit behind the scenes of producing and writing and um, just trying to um, bring my idea to life okay my love zone there's no love zone, you know, we're still trusting God for the love zone. So right now we're challenging all our energy on, um, on work so that we can make all the money that we can finance the love zone. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will stop it. I really don't, I, I don't have a celebrity crush. There are a couple of people that I look up to that I like their personality. Uh, if I say this now, the guy put it in the paper. Like I said this during an interview one time, I think it was one of the um, popular newspapers. And then the next headline I saw, Emmanuel Lukubi say, likes so so and so so. so. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm always just, <laughs> my request is like this one, like that. So I'm always worried about calling crushes, but for me, I don't call them crushes. I just think these are people that I like and I respect their brand and how far they've been able to carry up their careers and um, how far they've been able to grow and how relevant they still make themselves despite, you know, how far the industry has come. So I would say people like um, the likes of Genevieve, Amotola, um, Okay, let me look for a younger person so I don't say this guy is going for you know, people. Um, younger, younger, let me see. There's another talent. I think Zena Balog is an amazing, talented. Adesua is another amazing, talented person. And I love the way she's taking her brand and carrying her brand. Uh, Adesua who told me, uh, sorry, Wellington. You know, you have to put that there. Um, who else? Who else is there? Yeah, basically. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, uh, everything I am, everything I do is all centered around God. Um, I, I love God so much because God is my life is about God. I've seen God particularly take me. Like I said, I think I've mentioned a lot in the interview where there are things that are prior to my life where I'm like, oh God, how, what do I want, what do I do? Or oh, I have this idea, and God just put you know just bring something up for me and um and it just works easily for me uh like i said i really wanted to be do big brother and that was the platform i was really following all my heart for three years i was going for big brother audition back to back in fact i had to fly all the way from kenya because i thought okay maybe the people in kenya the audition i was doing never gets to mnet or, or the organizers 
you know, as a Nigerian, because I was going in as a Nigerian. So I thought, you know, maybe like, actually, if I come to Nigeria to audition, I will get it. I get, I always get to the second round for some reason, but just, you know, that part where they say, we'll call you. We'll call you. And you wait for the call, and you just see the housemates being put in the house. They never call you. Yeah, so that's just the whole thing. So, um, and then I was hoping on that, and then Mr. Nigeria came, and for me, that. That was a platform that has really helped me in taking me to a whole new level. And guess what? I was a guest at the, not this current Big Brother, the last Big Brother house to encourage the Big Brother contestants. Can you imagine that? So you see the way God works for me in my life. So um, I, I, I love God so much and I always say this, that I'm nothing without God. You know, um, uh, I, I, but come on, don't let me just go. Don't, don't, don't let me preach right now. <laughs> let me pray right now you know so that's my life that's god is everything everything for me. with all due respect dr freeze uh please we're tired honestly we're tired of your ranting we're tired of your talks we're tired okay uh, who do you think you are honestly you think you're so important that a pastor wants to preach about you for three Sundays, even for one Sunday? Or you think it's so important that a pastor is actually dedicating his time to, to remove you off Instagram or to shut you up? What are you talking that you think someone has time for you? Who are you? Honestly, like you just ranting and making all over Instagram. You have no work. Don't you have, don't you have work to do? Really? What's your problem with Christians? What's your problem with people paying tithes and offerings? I reacted. To that because I, I I think it was just I'd be, he's been doing all of that and for me I just got tired of it and I was like ah ah Abba, it's okay you know you've been saying this thing you've been but I feel like these are the wrong people of course we know we have um, churches or we have people who and it's in every society you know we have churches who are not practicing the way of God you know who are doing their own things but same time we still have churches who are impacting life who are doing the right things who are who are spirit led who are led by god who are doing the right things you know which of them is who is who we don't know we cannot we're not in that place to judge right um one thing i just know is that the church is an institution that has instilled a lot of more i think it's the only proper institution that is still instilling uh, instilling moral values to the young people these days. If you watch every other institution, there's nothing positive coming out of it. So I feel why just why are you so serious about trying to diminish or discredit the church so badly? You know, it, it's so wrong because for me, I've never been to a church where anyone has pulled after service or before the end of service. Everybody they pull a gun on you and like drop money it's always let if they call offering and tithes and tell you if you do it this this so it's every, it's always your personal decision so for me when 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 it kept on going on and on about it i was just like bro it's okay now it's fine you've you've highlighted these things a lot of people decide what they want to do you don't want to continue paying or they don't want to you know but just stop with the bashing of the church you know for me you know like it really got to me but one thing i just realized is at the end of the day we can't fight for god you know we can't you know so i i was doing that actually i was like mm, you know what that i just I, I was i just like god i'm sorry you know i just realized i can't fight for you you know we can't fight for god and god knows what god knows what he's doing god knows and uh, you know so yeah so we just let it go he wants to keep saying what he wants to keep saying. Let him keep saying what he wants to keep saying. You know, um, at the end of the day, one thing I know is the truth will always be the truth. And whatever you believe is what you believe. I, I believe in paying tight. I believe in offering. It has been a blessing for me. You know, so um, that's my belief. And it has worked for me. So whatever people believe in, but just don't interfere in people's choices. Well, that's, that's my fear. So yeah.